Hi, it's Kirby Summers. I welcome you to my true crime podcast. Uh, today is Sunday, April 28th. And I just want to give you guys a rundown because I'm already in part 11 of Deconstructing Wexner. Frankly, there's just so much information that wherever I start to dig under, there's like a flurry of more information that kind of is sitting there that nobody has bothered to look at. Um, gee, I don't even know where to start. So part 11 is a multi-part series of my deep dive into Leslie Wexner. Most of you who have been following the Jeffrey Epstein and Glenn Maxwell story have, if you haven't been following my work and you're just listening to the to me perhaps for the first time, um, you might think that the story, and I'm using that in quotes, is about Epstein and Maxwell. And by... Uh, relationship status Robert Maxwell and then or and some mobsters like Meyer Lansky but if you were to go that route you pretty much miss the fact that this is seriously the biggest psyop of our time um, it sheds the layers, this series, Deconstructing Wexner, of not just the fact that he was clutching his pearls, as did the CEOs of the most important organizations in the world, because these are multinational organizations clutched his pearls, stepped down from the board, right? Oh, I knew nothing, blah, blah, blah. They've all had the same, like it's a playbook, right? They step down when there's an article or there's um, a, a paper trail showing either they were uh, like Leon Black and Leslie Wexner giving money to Jeffrey Epstein and or like even John F. Kennedy, um, sorry, Robert Kennedy Jr., a known uh, uh, how should S. Uh, yeah. What I'm going to say is if you look at an S scandal involving Kennedy, the one who's now running for president, you will see that he used to keep a diary of how many women he was able to sleep with during the time that he was married. I mean, and, you know, and he raided these women and just like, there's a lot of like really unseemly behavior on the part of every single person that surrounds what I'm going to call the Wexner files it, just because, you know, Epstein certainly was a low level. I'm going to call him a technician. I've always believed that the bigger story uh, was something that was not being explained at all in mainstream. And of course, um, in a couple of the series, and again, it's part 11 that dropped earlier today, I explained the connection and relationship of some of the mainstream media founders, such as with the New York Times uh, and Time Magazine and The Atlantic and all of the uh, CBS, you know, the initial three uh, 
television stations that again were working on behalf of let's say a three-letter agency and a behind that three-letter agency is a group of people that you don't get to see that the public does not necessarily get to see and and that is basically uh the people that are exposed within my series uh deconstructing wexner uh so far you know i've covered a lot of the and and germany plays a very large role in this story as does the cultural conditioning of the population um even today you know it, I wasn't going to go into it, but Usher, Usher, yeah, Usher, who basically went to live with Sean Combs at the age of 15 and who signed a contract with a label that was started by Clive Davis, um, who I explain in this series uh, was almost caught um, pushing drugs on behalf of what I'm going to just refer to as the cabal. Now, in his case, he finagled himself free out of that and got back into the good graces of his masters, because even Clive Davis, with all of his power, he's not one of, one of the, let's say, the 50 or 60 so men who run the world from behind the scenes um so even clive davis as most of you know um you you must know about him and if i go on the tangent about davis i'm going to probably uh stay on that for a while so i think i'm just going to skip over that but i've 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 shared the uh, satanic uh meaning of many of the statues that were found and seen on Epstein's uh, Little St. James. And I'm talking about, you know, back a couple of um, installments ago. Um, I've, I go into the uh, early days of Wexner's life. I go behind the simple story that Roy Cohn was with Rosensteel, who was a blackmailer using children. And yeah, I, I go beyond all of this stuff. You know, I, I, I try to explain everyone's relationship to each other. Clearly, um, some of the familiar names come up, but so too are names that are usually not connected to the bigger Epstein story like Usher or the fact that it it's my opinion based on the research that I've been doing that the original creator of Victoria's Secret Roy Raymond did not necessarily jump off the Golden Gate Bridge in 1993 uh, because he wanted to put an end to his life uh, just like I don't believe that Danny Castellaro decided to drive to Virginia to have what he believed was a last interview that was going to help him figure out the pieces that he was working on, which is part of this bigger puzzle, because the bigger puzzle is because it is such a broad, and I'm going to use the word conspiracy against us, that it interweaves in and out of uh, many uh, scandals that every now and then reach the surface, you know, so that you're you're aware of Iran Contra, but you may not be aware of, let's say, uh, just to use him momentarily, of how Clive Davis was almost caught. Uh, engaging in the movement of uh, these, um, 
I, you know, it's hard, it's hard of heroin. Okay. And, uh, so you don't really hear that, uh, necessarily, you know, you hear about Iran Contra, you hear about Oliver North, uh, you don't hear about other people that were part of this. And, uh, you may hear certain things about Robert Maxwell, uh, but you may not understand uh, why, for example, he initially attempted to be in the public office in the UK, or you may not understand the, the roles. And if you do, that's great, but there's a lot more information um, that I keep sharing with the public. I initially thought it was going to be a four part series but again like wherever i look there's just so much more that needs to be shared and uh the only way that we can prepare ourselves um for what happens uh because uh these select maybe 50 to 60 people are involved with every public crisis these are all manufactured crises to enrich themselves, lessen our morale, deplete our resources, have us constantly on edge, right? Of fighting not only with each other, but fighting just to survive. That's basically why we're here. Nobody, listen to me carefully, nobody becomes a multi-billionaire as Leslie Wexner and many of the people that are exposed in this um connected with these interconnections without being part of the inner circle and not necessarily on the top level wexner is situated just beneath the top level that's why wexner uh will never uh will never be exposed for anything you know it's that's just the way it is it's not that Virginia Giuffre didn't try uh but even Virginia Giuffre has limited information as to the people that she's named and thank goodness she's named a lot of people um there is a photograph that was taken uh in 2005 at the Victoria's Secret fashion show that shows a big time record producer with his wife, who's uh, very known and uh, Tommy, Mat I'm talking about Tommy Matola and Tommy Matola had been married to Mariah Carey. Now uh, she was very young when she started. Um, my point being that the, they have their, they're puppet strings over every facet of our lives. Music industry, the film industry, the fashion industry. Think about the fashion industry for a second and give it a good thought. You know, cultural conditioning and other things. You know, um, there's just so much that has never been uh, fully explored and certainly not explored in the sense of one um, series, very neatly explained, produced, given to you by somebody like myself before I was made into an S slave for a member of this cabal, I was trafficked. I was trafficked to some of the high level members and I remember what I was told and what, what, you know, where the questions went. So effectively, when I start digging into the articles that I write on my Substack newsletter or the information that I share here on YouTube or the information that I share on my Patreon, I do so having some pre-knowledge First, firsthand on the field, let's say, experience um, in that world. Otherwise, and, and not everyone has that. 
you know, not everyone has that. And by the way, Wikipedia is not a research tool. I sometimes see people only sharing Wikipedia articles. And Wikipedia, by the way, you know, there was a Wikipedia page on me and that was removed um, because, you know, people like me, we're, we're considered whistleblowers, right? So if you're a whistleblower and you're out there to literally tell people the truth, because the truth is, I have to say that it is somewhat traumatic to understand it, to hear it for the first time, to understand how deep it goes, to understand the depravity of it, to understand that there, there is no, they, they do not view us as human beings. That is why there's so much um, misery on earth uh, across many continents, because we mean nothing. That is why our sons, our brothers, and our fathers were, you know, uh, used in military wars, fighting for what, you know? Um, it Nothing is as it seems, but it's time that we, you know, sort of like snap out of it. Many of you have. There's still a lot to be learned though, because again, it's, it's, it's so big that it's difficult to wrap your mind around it, much less to, to even get a perspective of what's this and what's that. And and by the way, Professor Hamamoto uploaded an interesting a snippet on his channel um, where um, sort of like another whistleblower exposes um, the founder of Project Veritas as being a shill, as having attended Bohemian Grove, of basically being one of them. And this is not the first time that Professor Hamamoto has explained to his le listening audience, which thankfully is growing, that alt media is not necessarily all truth tellers. He explains it very well. He says, well, you know, you can have 90% of the truth, but there's going to be 10% that is not true. And, and that's a deception. So that alt media has also been penetrated as, and, and is almost as bad as mainstream media. So who do you listen to? You have to use good judgment. You have to do your own research. You have to follow up the information that you hear. You can't be passive and just accept the word of somebody that uh, maybe you started to follow as a result of the Epstein story. And you believe everything that person says, you have to make sure that that person is working from a place of real um, transparency. Uh, and I mean, it, it, it is difficult. It's like stepping on landmines, right? Um, however, you know, we just have to come together and continue to share our stories as people who have firsthand experience not the so-called desk jockeys. I think that's another expression that Professor Hamamoto uses um, without having firsthand knowledge about certain things. There, it's almost impossible to explain the inner workings of this world and who's related to what and who's done what, because that information uh, only becomes clear to somebody who has some uh, direct knowledge about it. And, and that means having spoken to one or more per people during a, a long period of time and not just reading an article. All right, guys, I hope that you end up 
becoming members of my Substack. I, I, I need for all of you to read the series. If you read nothing else this year, read Deconstructing Wexner, part 11. I don't know how many parts it's going to be. It's a very big story. It is perhaps my deepest dive into any of the characters uh, in this story because it opens the door to all of the secret faces that you haven't seen. And I do this for like a hundred year period so that you can uh, um, identify who the big players are so that you learn how to spot them and, and so that you do not fall prey to a lie because we're lied to, come on, we're lied to on a daily basis. That's what mainstream does. It's propaganda. All right, guys, give this a like. I'm sorry to like maybe be a little too heavy on a Sunday morning, but hey, um, we're friends here, I hope. I know that a lot of people from the other side follow my stuff just to see what I'm saying. So this is not for you guys, but it's for people that have a good heart and that want the best for humanity. All right. Have a nice day. Bye.